I can't believe I'm doing this video so soon. But whatever, I want to be honest. So, yes, today is the day where I'm just telling my story. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my studio. Today was time to film a new video. And I've been thinking about this specific video I want to make for quite a while. And today just feels like the right day to film it and to tell my story. Not just in general my story, but the story why I left London in order to be happier. I thought it would take me years until I would finally realize what is going on and why things are the way they are. And especially now that I am teaching new fashion designers and that I do all these fashion education videos, I think it's important to talk about it. So I moved away from London about three years ago and I have not regretted it since. Unfortunately, many of us designers are tricked into this idea of living in bigger cities and only when you live in a major fashion city you're going to be successful. And for the past three years I've just witnessed the opposite. The reason why I'm filming this video today and why I tell my story is that I just witnessed so many young designers struggling to survive in bigger cities where they believe that they can only be successful if they stay and if they work hard enough. And it's just not true. I've been doing this for so long now and I live the best life I could have right now and I don't live in a bigger city anymore. I've done this for years, believe me, I moved so much, really a lot. I was living in London and New York and in Paris. I basically lived anywhere that has the name major fashion city and I've worked there too. So for those of you who don't know, in 2019 I graduated from Fashion Design Women's Wear in St. St. Martins and since then decided that I want to work for myself or at least, you know, continue in some way with my ideas and my own concepts. So unfortunately, right after graduation, I had a family emergency and I needed to stay in my home country for a while. Uh, because a family member was on her deathbed and I wanted to visit her every day in the hospital. But at the same time, obviously life goes on, so you need to work. So I originally was planned to relocate for um, a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, which I did. I was flying back and forth between um, my home city and London. And that was already one of the earliest situations where I realized I don't need to be in London all the time. I can work somewhere else and just go there for appointments and really important meetings. So that went on for a while. Um, I just traveled back and forth whenever I had an appointment or other things to do. I even showed my garments at London Fashion Week. I even sent out my garments um, to magazines with mail and it worked perfectly fine. It was very tough in the beginning because I was so used to this hectic lifestyle um, that is going on in London and also like what kind of day-to-day -day life you have when you work as a fashion designer. And obviously, whenever I went back to my home country, it felt completely different. It's a smaller country. There is not such a huge fashion scene. and But I needed to kind of motivate myself and continue working in the same speed that I usually do just to keep up with everything. I believe I even had to work harder to actually maintain the same quality of my work because I've not been surrounded by all the talents anymore. However, despite me having the need to work really hard, overall I can say my life quality has changed so much. It really has improved compared to London where you pay over a thousand pounds to stay in a tiny room and just to live somewhere now I'm having having the luxury of having a garden. I have a room for my studio equipment. I have one room to film. I have one room where I can just work on my garments. I have a bedroom. I have a kitchen. And of course, that is such a nice thing to have. And I'm happy that this was one of the 
best things that could have happened to me. Looking at the state I'm in now, I live so much more healthier. I have a sleeping schedule. I sleep enough, even though I'm working crazy hours. But still, I sleep eight hours, which is perfect. And I can see my skin cleared up. I feel better. My blood levels when it comes to my vitamin deficiencies have gone back to normal. I'm not losing any hair. I, I'm not losing patches of hair. I, I just feel great. I feel healthy. And this is one of the outcomes where I can definitely tell that my life has improved. And that just supports my decision on why I should keep doing things the way I do right now and not go back to how it used to be. Gotta be honest, the first few months, maybe even the first year, was pretty stressful because I always had the fear of not being able to keep up with everyone who was still living in London, working. But that's, that feeling left me pretty soon. I always had to remind myself that I could go back any day, especially when it comes to big cities. There's a constant coming and leaving. Everyone is moving there, moving away again. Every day there's a flight going to London and I could return any day and get a room immediately. So I really had to remind myself that I'm not completely lost. I, this is just what I'm trying out for the moment. And if it's not going well, I'm just gonna do a sudden change again and then go back and pick, pick up where I left. However, the pandemic hit all of us, there were no flights available anymore. In fact, um, all flights were cancelled to London, so there was just no way um, for me to leave and I had to find a way on how to make it work from here, like from my house, being thousands of kilometers away from Fashion Weeks, which did not happen anyway, but when you're so used to this lifestyle and constantly working for the next fashion week and you need to show your collection and you need to sell to the buyers you're so fixated on this idea so when it's suddenly not available anymore this option you kind of panic i did not fully go into panic mode but i, sh I surely was worried about how to continue something that i really got to remind many of my friends or my fashion students of is that you need to Give yourself a reality check. The world is not going down if you're not selected for a fashion award or some sort of competition. The world does also not go down just because you did not get the design position you applied for. I'm the only creative in my family. I have I have family members working at the police. They tell me stories that are much worse than that. And this gives me a reality check every day. So I'm just grateful for doing what I'm doing. And to be honest, looking back on everything that has happened um, during the pandemic for the two years that it was just going on and really hard to move forward and get things going, I'm so glad that things slowed down in general because it finally gave me time to think about where do I want to go what do I want to make? What does my future look like? What kind of life do I want to live? And I'm really thankful that I got stuck in this place where I'm right now. I started to grow a vegetable garden. I picked up new hobbies. I tried out new things. I've been knitting. I've been painting the rooms. I've been settling into my studio, bought furniture, and I picked up this passion again for just working on something that I really enjoy and suddenly it just hit me like why could I be so stressed about not being in London when I'm now living in a great house with a garden I'm growing my own vegetables why would I trade all of this to go back to London where I pay over a thousand pounds for a tiny room crammed where the quality of the building is really questionable and I will just never get by with the amount that I earn. It's like a black hole and you throw all your money in there and you have no chance on saving it. And to be honest, I watch so many young designers 
starve and just not making enough to get by like why are we doing this to ourselves this is the real question so whenever i lived in a bigger city there was such a strong imbalance when it comes to my resources so you go to work you might not get paid well especially if you're a younger designer you're in a junior position or maybe you're still an intern and Sometimes you don't even get paid at all. So like how you're supposed to pay your rent or for your expenses. And that always felt so inefficient for me, which I don't know, might be the German talking out of me there. But when it comes to efficiency, of course, that has improved a lot more. I can see where my money goes. I can see it how I can see how I invested it well. I can see what I can get out of it too. And that is surely something I would not give up on anymore. All of us designers are so hardworking, we want to get something out of it. We put our effort there, we put our long working hours there, like why should we not earn from it and improve our life? And I promised myself as long as this is working for me and that I can keep my standards on working internationally, I'm gonna do it. And to be honest, this is my, I think my third or fourth business year and just of being an artist, an independent designer, and it just improves year by year. I even picked up a new position as a teacher and I teach all of these new fashion students and I'm enjoying it so much I would not want to miss it. And just having all of this combined with my own work and then traveling back and forth for meetings and doing international meetings, maybe even flying in my team to um, locations where I'm currently working and where I film, it, this is the best decision that I could have made like I did not think about it a couple of years back but now that just everything went hand in hand and how it worked out I can just recommend it to anyone who is a young designer to just try it honestly if you regret it or it's just not working out you can always go back to where you left off but unless you have not tried it, you will never know if this could be an option for you if there. Or if there is, you know, a chance for you to improve your life situation. Of course, we've got to be fair about this. Not everyone can just leave. So I'm in a very privileged situation where most of my work is digital. So I can do this remotely wherever I want to do it. And just send it off to London or wherever. Or even Tokyo. It doesn't really matter. Wherever I need to send my work. But of course, if you're a makeup artist or a stylist or if you have some sort of physical job and you need to attend um, shoots in London or Fashion Week, there's no way around it. You have to keep living there and um, attend your day-to-day -day life jobs, which I always hope that this works out too, to be honest. it's it's I've got many friends who are dependent on staying somewhere physically and I'm always very happy when I'm proven wrong and when they're doing great and when they have um, some sort of life quality and improvement year by year. Beside me improving my quality of life, I've got to say I think I've major matured, matured? I matured, matured, matured. I think I matured. Is that the right word? Let's just say it differently. I've grown so much as a person just by moving away, setting myself a new challenge, even though it was not intended, needing to keep up with everyone else who keeps on living in a bigger city and is physically surrounded by all the contacts that are important in our industry. And I honestly feel that many of my skills automatically improved because I had to work so much harder to keep up and it made me really adaptable to new situations. I'm really not afraid of going somewhere else again or having to start all over again because I've been through this so many times even before I graduated from university like what what could happen next? If you're unhappy with your life, if you're stuck in a bigger city and you see yourself going somewhere else there's the option for you to try something new, I would always recommend it. I think it's just very important that you set yourself a goal and that you just not start new opportunities or new chances without any 
finish line. You need to set yourself target goals. Otherwise, you will just work into an empty white space and nothing will come out of it, potentially. I mean, I've seen many people who just kind of like go with the flow that works out too. But honestly, from my experience, kind of like you see the target, but then along the way you pick up new target goals or new chances and that's also really great you just gotta motivate yourself with something you work towards too so i hope you enjoyed me rambling for such a long time please make sure to subscribe to this channel and follow me on social media and i see you in the next video